You've seen these everywhere in commercial buildings, stores, apartment blocks, whatever. Big battery boxes mounted on the wall with a couple of spotlights on it. And their job is when the power goes out, they light up the stairways, they light up the corridors. They are essential in all of these commercial businesses. And when they break, they have to be replaced or repaired because they can't get insurance if these things aren't working. Here's one that's not working. Let's figure out why. This is an emergency light, a ready light. Apparently it's not working. We're just gonna check to make sure, first of all, that the transformer's not open like the last one I saw. And it looks like the transformer has continuity. Apparently this does not work. So we're gonna see what's wrong with it. See why it doesn't work. Plug it into power and listen for any sounds. The light comes on, so we know it's got power. It says charge. Now the fellow that brought me this is an electrician. He was working in a building that this was not working in and he took it out and brought it to me to see if we can figure out why it doesn't work. So it probably does not have a battery in it at the moment, which it doesn't. But that's okay, I have a battery that I can plug in here for testing because it's going to be, it'll be 12 volts. We'll check and see if we've got power on the battery charging terminals or on the, on the power terminals for the battery. Nineteen volts, so it should charge. I'm going to grab a twelve volt battery. We're going to pop a twelve volt battery on here and just make sure that it's working. Maybe maybe it was a bad battery. Well, this one should work. Ah. So the lights come on right away. That's weird. Interesting. That's the fault. The lights come on right away. They should be off now while it's charging. Now, the very fact that I hear this thing chattering away here, the relay chattering away, makes me think it's gotta be a filter. The relay down here. Yeah, it's, got, it, it, it's gotta be a filter. Okay, well, we'll pull this board out and uh, take a look at it, but I bet it's one of these caps, I mean, one of these caps that that is bad. Anyway, let's uh, unplug the power and disconnect the battery and we'll get the board pulled out and check some capacitors and see whether that's where the fault is, but I, I bet yeah, it's either, it's either going to be a connection problem or cap that's gone bad. Seems to be fairly busy in here. There's a lot, a lot going on inside this unit. Like as far as the, the number of components for something as simple as this, I mean, after all, this is just I mean, it's just a relay control, right? It's a battery charger, and when the power goes off, a relay opens or, and turns on emergency lights. There's really nothing to this. This could be made so simple, but they've gone and made it overly complex. I don't see any bad connections, but I think that uh, our problem on this is going to be a capacitor. And there's only a couple capacitors on here. So let's just get the ESR meter out and uh, we'll test them. We'll see if uh, one or more of them is bad. I'm betting that that's what the problem is going to be. First thing we'll do is we'll discharge the caps just to make sure that there's nothing, you know, charge stored in them to blow up my meter. There, I think everything is dead now. Okay, that first cap I want to check is this one right across here. And this one measures hmm, 38. Hmm. Yeah, hmm, yeah, I think that's, that's a little high. That's a little high. Uh, we'll change that one out. I bet you that's the fault. 
We can check the other ones while I'm at it since the meter's still going here. But I think it's going to be that first one that I just checked there. This one here is measuring. Well, that one's measuring 39 as well. And the third one was over here. Where is it? This one here is uh, 3.8. So this one is measuring 40 ohms as well as this one here. We'll change both of those two. Change both those two caps out and that will probably fix this. What size of caps am I looking at here? One's a 470 at 25 volts and oh, there's a, there's a fourth cap over here. Shall we check that one while we're at it? Probably fine. Probably fine, no problem. But we'll check it. Alright, this one here is uh, 7. Yeah, I think that was probably okay. It's a very small cap. Four seventy and what's that other one? Oh, there's another one down here. Geez, I'm finding more caps in this thing. It's probably okay as well. I think it's just those two. This other one is uh, right uh, here, and this one is uh, fourteen, but it's also the size. Of, it's a very small cap. What's the size of this one? It is 2.2. And this 470. And this other one here, this one. One microfarad. Uh, actually, you know what? I bet it's okay because it doesn't even show a reading. I bet it's this one right here. That's the one we're going to change. Just try it and see what happens. We'll just change just this one cap and see if that fixes it. I bet it does. Okay, I'm not even going to bother putting this back into the cabinet for testing. We'll just connect it up to the battery. So the way these operate is they will stay off until, like when you first hook up the battery, they will not turn on until they've had power applied. That's what triggers the charging. And now when I remove the power, the light comes on. Put the power on, the light goes out. That's what they're supposed to do. One bad cap. If I press the test switch, the lights come on. So that's all that was wrong with this one, was one failed capacitor. The, 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 the hint was I could hear it buzzing. I could hear the rebase chattering. So that kind of confirmed what I suspected it was going to be, was a bad cap. So I'll just remount the board and get this out of here and the customer that owns this will be happy because it's in a commercial building so they have to have these things tested to get their insurance right their their fire insurance so when they fail these are actually quite expensive these units to bring an electrician in and replace them these are not cheap so getting it fixed and put back in service is a much cheaper option than uh, replacing it with a new one. But my neighbor who's the electrician, well he's not he's, he's not an engineer, he's a he's an electrician. That's his job. And so when it comes down to repairing components, then he brings stuff to me. The same as when I needed electrical work done. I was working in a customer's place and we needed to get power into a closet to power up, uh, you know, power up our ONTs and stuff. 
I would call him and give him a call and say, hey, come on down, we need to install an output. Even though I was capable of doing that, he's the one with the electrician's ticket to do it. So I'd call him out to do it, and he'd put an outlet in for me, and then when stuff breaks, he brings it to me. When, when it's technological stuff, even though this is pretty simple. This is from March 2003. Give it one more test. Now that it's back together. Give it power. It goes into charge mode. Remove the power. The lights come on. Sounds like the relay is energized when the lights are on. You see, because when I plug it in, you don't hear anything. And then the lights kick in, the relay energizes. That's done like that so that if the battery goes dead, it won't kill the battery completely. When the voltage drops off below a certain point, it'll just cut out. But when the battery is first installed, the lights won't come on. Alright, done. Thanks for watching.